Hey guys, what is up? Welcome back to the channel. It is yours truly, Crystal Leandra. I have an awesome guest here today and I'm so like excited. I can't, I could scream. Like I, she got on like chat with me. I was like, oh my God, we're finally here. Um, today I have um, Elfie from Paranormal State. Her and I have been friends for a while. She was a fan of the Ghost Girl Diaries channel from back in the day. And that's how we ended up chatting like years ago. We've talked about collaborating never did it and finally we're here it's like yes finally we're here um today we're gonna have some really cool topics we're gonna chat about opinions and discussions on the black dahlia the reason i brought that topic up specifically was because it was recently brought up again with um, the ghost adventures crew when they went to the cecil hotel um, in Los Angeles. That was an amazing episode if you have not seen it yet, by the way. Um, and this is a paranormal podcast for those of you that are brave enough to join the circle. We're also going to talk about the Slender Man, which is like literally a dark hole. Like Elfie and I were talking about this earlier. You can take this in so many different directions because it was like a character that was actually created like it went viral, you know, it, it was like born from the internet basis of like of things going viral. And in my opinion, I think it's a lot stronger than people realize. And so I, I she went down a dark rabbit hole. I went down a dark rabbit hole. <laughs> it's just, it's, it's fun to do that with people that are, are really, really, truly like minded. So with that being said, I want to bring in my guest, Elfie girl, we're finally here together. How are you? Hey, I'm doing good. I'm so glad. How you doing? I am wonderful. It's <laughs> taken us. It took us what, like three, three years to get here finally. <laughs> it, it it took like the plans had to line up or something. <laughs> it's so true. It was like it was like perfect timing, astrological timing, like. And then I I messaged you in like December, I think, and I was I think I texted mm -hmm. you and I was like, why don't we just like rip the band aid and just like do it? <laughs> and you were like all right like you are so like chill about it You're like let's do it let's do it so here we are so when did you like start watching ggd like you got into ghost girl diaries like a minute ago i want to say it was pretty early on was like, it yeah 
God, how many years has it been over me? Oh my, don't say that, girl. Like, literally. <laughs> like, okay, 2011 was when Paranormal Challenge happened. And I think my, like, I don't know if you, I hope to God you didn't see my first few videos because they were so bad. But, like, my first few videos were 2013. And those were gone, by the way. Like, I, <laughs> I've removed those from YouTube. Like, nobody can find them. They're gone. They're archived. But, yeah, it's been I a minute. I at least 2014. Yeah. yeah. I, I want to say it was 2014 when I started watching oh, good. the shows and everything. Well, that's when it got and better. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> it was so bad. Woo, so bad. So, um, you Elf. You powered up. You got in. <laughs> oh, I, like, I started with, like, a card table and, like, a sequin backdrop. It was just really, like, I just don't, it's like oh, PTSD. Right like, no, you look great. It looks like you're in, like, a witchy spot studio. Like, I love it. You have, like, yeah, a little it pop. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> don't look at everything else. So let's chat about. Have you seen the Cecil episode, by the way? I don't. I didn't even ask you if you saw it. Yes, I did. You I actually did. Like, uh, hunted it down and and watched it and everything because we met him. I was like, I don't think I saw that. <laughs> so yeah, it I, was I, really I good. Sat down watching everything. It was longer than their normal episodes. Mm -hmm. I think it was like an hour and a half or something. But they did mention that the Black Dahlia. Um, was seen the day before at the Cecil. I, I call it Cecil mm. and Cecil, okay? Like, I have... A, I think I've heard it called either It's way, both. <laughs> if you go to Los Angeles, people call it both, honestly. Mm. But I made this huge video on it years ago. Like, literally, I think it was, like, 2015. And the only thing people wanted to, like, talk smack about was the fact that I was pronouncing it wrong. <laughs> that was, like, the only complaint they had. And I was, like... All the things... I was, like, the literally, whole show. I'm from Colorado, man. Like, I don't... Cecil Cecil, potato, potato, man. Like, I don't know. You know? Like... They were all over that place in the show, too. Like, they just, like, they did the tour. They went everywhere. <laughs> it was amazing that they had access and it was shut down for the mm -hmm. whole thing. Like, I'm so jealous, honestly. Um, I was actually invited to be on the episode uh, from the producers, and I, I'm, that's something I'm going to talk a little bit more about in my uh, YouTube video. But the producers that work with Zach and the Travel Channel, they know that I have also been trying to get in that hotel for literally years. And in my, the reason I think they finally got in, honestly, is because we're in a damn pandemic. <laughs> like, literally, I don't think they would have gotten in. Like, they prob their business is probably like there's hurting. there's no one else here anyway, so it, why not <laughs> Literally, pay us some money and, like, we'll let you come in for the night. So, really, he's, it mm. was just lucky. He just happened to get in at, like, a really perfect time. So, um, yeah. now, the Black Dahlia, one of the reasons I've been fascinated with it forever is because they kind of considered it, like, our version of a Jack the Ripper, yeah, I would, I kind of put, yeah, I would put it in that category. And I'm obsessed with, like, the UK history and, like, lore and, like, paranormal. Like, I'm obsessed. So, I the Jack the Ripper files, like, I love. But, you mm -hmm. know, when they found her body, I, I was realizing, like, I hadn't really gone into depth when they found her body. So, it was a woman and her child, like, going on a walk in L.A., and they stumbled upon the Black Dahlia, which, obviously, we know that her name is um, Elizabeth Short. But mm -hmm. the woman that found the body, essentially, like originally, didn't know it was a, a human remains. She thought it was a mannequin. Well, uh, I made the mistake. I, I did, well, not so a mistake, but I did the Google search of the picture. <gasps> Is there really? Like, oh, my God. Now I have to do it. Is it bad? I, oh, yeah. God. <laughs> well, because it's there's bad. there's the picture. There's the clean picture I think they, they gave to the press where... It's her in on the ground with a like a blanket over top of her. The, oh, the more tasteful one. But then, if oh. you Google search, you oh, can see the oh yeah forensic pictures, like the actual how they found her. Oh yeah, she's like disconnected, like straight up disconnected. Like it's not even someone didn't even try to like pretend like she was a whole body. Wow. Um, but she really does look kind of like a mannequin. Like she's it does. like stark white. There's like nothing else there. She's there's no blood, nothing. She really does look not human it doesn't it looks fake 
But I guess the mortifying part behind that, too, is that someone did clearly do the actual crime elsewhere, Mm -hmm. which, I mean, I don't really want to go into that, because that was a Ghost Adventures episode. They did go to the supposed murderer's house and, like, capture evidence. I don't know. Like, we can't really point any fingers unless it's, like, indefinite, and, and we can't really decide that. But obviously, there was zero blood found at the crime scene. Which means wherever she was murdered, she was, like, completely drained of, like, her, her, of everything. And that's, hor- like, wow. Like, I guess when I'm, like, th- talking about true ki- crime and, like, documentaries and stuff, I think of the time and patience that it had to have taken to do these, like, horrific crimes. Well, yeah, because when you look at it, that wasn't a quick job. That no. That was very precise and very detail-oriented, and I think... In the, the report, they found, like, a smudge or two of blood off the scene. But, yeah, she was pretty much bloodless. Completely. And, the, like, all fluids were gone. Um, mm-hmm. And then she'd had the gash in her face as well. And it was very much like, I mean, I've read through the case files, and it seems to me like you would have had to have a serious background in medical in order to do this. Yeah, especially when they are talking about how none of the organs were disturbed and everything was cleanly cut through because uh, a couple of the crime podcasts I talked to, they are like, this is a very specific way you cut through so you don't cut through major organs. I'm like, okay, you have to have gone to medical school to know where to cut. You would. And how would you know, especially like you think of like crime scenes like Richard Ramirez and they're so violent and they like stomp people to death and like did these like horrific crazy violent deaths and yeah, like, I mean, like like to me like a killer like or like John Wayne Gacy you know he abducted the kids and like tied them up and like you know like mm-hmm. they're very like um a lot of anger like going into that and when i so i'm trying to say is like it's a quick fast crime and like they wouldn't have the time or patience to think of oh, I, I have to be careful where I cut so they don't hurt an organ. Like, they don't care, you know? Like So this person, it was almost like a guinea pig. Do you agree with that? Well, what was interesting is that apparently a lot of stuff was done to her finally before her death, and then the, the caring for the cutting up and everything was after the fact that was just so clean. And similar to, like, the unlike Jack the Ripper where when he was done it was very passionate and very violent and just like right there exactly well they think she had to have been murdered in some sort of like a bathtub where it would have oh, drained out which is just horrific I can't like mm-hmm. once again the the patience for somebody to be able to do that and to watch it as it's happening is just mind-blowing to me And then for her to be actually cut in half, they had to, like, remove a vertebrae or something. And there's, like, a specific area where this has to be done. Which, once again, if you haven't had some sort of medical experience, how would you know or even... Like, even let's let's play pretend and say somebody out there studies medical stuff and, like, gets medical books on their own. Would you have the confidence, even after studying it, to like go in, you you know what I'm saying? Like right? Like seriously? Yes, like like I'm gonna pull out my Grey's Anatomy and we're gonna <laughs> like try this out. You're like, all right, well I got this girl murdered, so I think I'm gonna decide to like separate her spine. Like I think I'm gonna go there. You know what I mean? Like, but the confidence but, to do that as well. And I agree. I think when you said guinea pig, I think, it, I think whoever did it didn't look at her as human at that point. Just looked at her as something to to experiment with to dissect to like just like curiosity like, like a specimen like she was like a lab specimen to them or something weird yeah not even a person at that point so someone named ashley one of our fans said i do not believe um that the man did it i'm assuming this is the guy that's in the ghost adventures episode i don't have those notes with me right now guys but um she said i know he was a bad man but i think that it may have been an abortion gone bad and they covered it up and did like an over the top massacre. That's an interesting theory. Um, I didn't. So they talk about Dr. Hodel. Hodel, yeah, Hodel. Yeah, um, he, he's like the, the big guy that they talked about on the show and then like the one they really. Fo- I mean, actually, what's interesting with the show itself is like I went down the rabbit hole just looking up the house because I'm like, I've seen that house before. <laughs> in Los Angeles, in LA? 
Yeah, like I'd seen it on other shows or something. I'm mm-hmm. like, where's that house from? <laughs> yeah, that girl, it's his daughter, right? Or his stepdaughter or something like that. She, I was looking into it too, and man, she has made, I think she's made some money off this, which good for her, boo. Like she needs a check too, you know? Like everybody needs a check. But she's done interviews, with, like multiple after Ghost Adventures, and she's allowed like photographers and journalists to come in. And, like, so they've made it into this little empire. I'm like, good for you, girl. You get it, you know? Like, oh, yeah. It was, it's his grand step or his granddaughter. And then there was uh, his son, Steve, Steve Hodel. Yes. Who wrote the book believing that his father was the killer because living in the house, he's like, yes, yeah, something didn't add up right or something like that. Right. No, I know. It's really, really weird stuff. But Mm -hmm. it's once again going back to, like, the divine timing thing, too, which I found interesting. So when she was, like, found murdered, they didn't... Obviously, she was kind of, like, considered a Jane Doe. They didn't know who she was, what what was going to happen. And then they ended up finding out that her fingerprints were found in the FBI's, like, sector twice. And it was because only, like, seven or eight months before that, she had applied for a job at an army base... And then the second time she'd gotten arrested. So once again, divine timing. How many people in this world get murdered and do not have fingerprints? And oh, then, yeah. you know what I mean? Like, she just happened to be found in the system. Like, if it weren't for those two incidences, she was arrested for, I believe it was drinking under the inf- or she was under the influence or something. Was she drinking under the influence or something like that? Yeah, it was a DUI she got. So lucky for her, she was identified how many mm-hmm. of these people this weird stuff happens to, we don't hear about it because it just becomes another Jane Doe and they can't be identified. Oh, yeah. And, like, I found it interesting, the, the case file of this, how they used the old, this, apparently this old school, they call it sound photo, which was, I guess, the early idea of a fax machine back in the day to do this, mm-hmm. too. Which I'm just like, I want to see one of those. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> Literally. Um, so they did apparently have a lot of suspects that they came in. They did interviews, um, but nobody was really ever, ever technically charged. So it's amazing that her story has gone on for so long. And once again, more amazing to me that she's connected to the Cecil Hotel. Because that hotel is so damn dark. Like, it's amazing to me. So she was, let's see, January uh, 1947 is when she was murdered. But the day before she was reportedly, like, went missing or was found, um, she was actually found um, or seen at the Cecil Bar um, several days before the murder happened. So it's just weird that there's a connection with the Cecil Hotel because it's just such bad energy. And it was interesting, even on the Ghost Adventures episode, they couldn't even go over all the deaths that have happened there. There's so many deaths. Like, they didn't even... Between the murderers, the murderers, and then the suicides. Right. It's like one after the other. One after the other. The suicides seem to be the strangest for me at Cecil because they literally just jump out of the window with, like, no question. All of it. Like, there's more that, that Zach didn't even talk about with Ghost Adventures that you guys didn't even see. Um, and they just jump out of the window. And, like, there's been a couple times where they've killed people on the street below. The one girl fell on the marquee, which is like, oh, my God, what a painful death. Can you oh. imagine that? Like, oh, no, no. Like, the metal it's slamming it. Oh, no, no. Like, that just sounds sounds horrible. Um now I'm going back into my notes here. Black Dahlia. So <laughs> they were on season 12. So the the Black Dahlia house, which is in Los Angeles, was on the season 12 premiere of Ghost Adventures, if you guys are interested. I just wanted to kind of do a little bit of extra research and chat about it before. So she, so 1947, so the major incidences that happened around her being seen there um, at the Cecil in 1947 was the Dorothy Purcell um, that was when she was found murdered, or with her boyfriend, right? Is that... No, no. Yeah, she's the girl that was with her boyfriend and the shoe salesman. Yeah, the one That who, she threw her baby. Oh, my God. That was just... Like, I looked up a few times, a few things with that, because I'm like, that's just... Just the weirdest kind of scenario where it's like, she goes in the bathroom, gives birth, thinks it's dead, and it's just like... It's weird to, I don't know what, like, it boggled my brain, honestly. Yeah, P.S. Like, let's just chat because we're girls for a minute, okay? 
Like, she claims she quietly gave birth. How did that happen? Like, women do have, like, a higher, like, pain tolerance for sure than men, like, 100%. But, like, Uh I don't... How do you quietly give birth? Like, I would be like, holy shit. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I'd be screaming and, like, cussing. And also, like, how do you... Like, she had to have been quite far along. Not that I'm saying that it's not possible to not know, because it does happen sometimes. But like, well, yeah, I you mean, would there's have... a whole show of like, I didn't know I was pregnant. But right. Well, and you, she would have skipped periods. Those rooms can't be that big, and the bathroom can't right. be that far away from the bed. So how how's the guy not wake up hearing anything at all? Well, let me just say that I wouldn't just let my boyfriend sleep through that. Okay. Let me just say you're gonna endure this with me. Okay. <laughs> like, I'm in pain, boo. You're gonna be in pain with me back. Okay. <laughs> Jesus, so but bad. But then just what she does is next is just like. Oh God! It's just no. I know. It's like, you know, so sad. How? I don't. I guess I just don't understand. That's one, two things that I can't stand. Which I love true crime. I love paranormal and occult. Obviously, two things that I don't get. Well, I guess three. Human sacrifices. That's just gross to me. Two, hurting animals. That makes me more sick than anything. And three. Hurting, like, a child. I don't get, like, how how could you, like, carry this thing for nine months, like, birth it, palm it, like it's, like, a football, and then you're just like, oh, you know what? It's dead. I'm just going to toss it out the window. It's just weird to me, like, and it sucks because you don't know what was happening at that time. Was it mental health? Because that was a point in time. You're talking, what, 1944? Mental health wasn't a thing, really, till recently, you know? Well, it was. it was, like... It wasn't, it was still kind of new in some ways. I think they said, I think there was like three doctors that looked at her that they finally went back to her case and, and, and decided it was like due to insanity and everything. And mm-hmm. like back then, most of the time, women were like usually labeled as hysterical mm-hmm. or, and it's like, they didn't really go probing further. It's like, here's some pills, you're hysterical. Oh man, back Have then, you could literally, as a woman in that time, you could be put in an insane asylum for, like, being crabby at your husband. Yeah. Like, literally. Oh, yeah. Or, like, if you had a bad period and you had cramps, you're going to the insane asylum because you complain too much. Like, any, like, even if you weren't a good housewife, like, they would, like, deem you insane and just stick you in there, put you on pills. It's just sick. So it does make you wonder, like, what, what was going on? What was going on there? Yes, yeah, so three, three psychiatrists. I would love to know the before all that. Like, what was she going on before that? Mm-hmm. See, when I look at cases like this, my my like true crime brain starts like going, mm-hmm. and I think of stuff like, does she have any family or even the boyfriend, which is Ben Levine? Obviously, they would be. I mean, they may not be alive at this point, they, or else they could be in their nineties or even a hundred. But do they have grandchildren or even kids that know about what happened? And that I'd love to like interview them and be like, what was this about? Like, what happened here? Do you even know what happened? Mm-hmm. That's where my true crime brain goes, though. So, anyway, overall, what do you think about Cecil's like energy? Like, do you think? I mean, you know, there were like weird things going on before Jack came in, which was the other serial killer. There was weird things going on before Richard Ramirez showed up. So, you know, people are always like, oh, Richard Ramirez did satanic stuff and that's what caused it. Yes, I agree with that, obviously. Like, he's clearly a Satan worshiper. But there was stuff happening before then. What Do you think, do you have a theory on, like, what's going on there? To look at the hotel, the location of it, and I was kind of wondering, like, what was there before, like, when it was new, during, like, all these major times with the, the criminals and um, the suicides and the deaths and such. Mm-hmm. And were there any other hotels? Because I keep wondering, like, was this just a place of convenience? Like, is mm-hmm. this just, ha- unfortunately, happened to be the hotel that was the easiest to get to, to take care of things or to end your life or something, unfortunately? Mm-hmm. Well, I wonder if it's just, well, I, if that, now it's a good point saying, could it possibly be like a ley line? You know what I mean? Like, I mean, not a lot of people believe in ley lines. I do, because I think anything is, like, I think that when you've been in paranormal as long as, like, Elfie as well, 
like everything anything could happen okay like literally like there's like nothing's off the table you know what i mean like you can't really be a skeptic but i think it's almost like one giant portal in some way and then you do get richard ramirez involved and then jack who wants to mimic him and it just you're just making it 40 times worse well, and also just like looking at the Black Dahlia case in general, I, I found it interesting looking, because I think around the time when this, this case was going on, uh, I believe the LAPD apparently was starting to be investigated because there apparently were a lot of deaths in LA that were not being solved. And so they were being looking into them for like being basically crooked cops and mm-hmm, mm-hmm. everything. And it's this fascinating kind of jackal hide of this area of you have the Hollywood trying to present a very clean um, Hayes Code mm-hmm. upstanding society, but then you also have the underbelly of all the strange fringe stuff and all the dark stuff that also happens just under the surface as well. Well, and if you're talking about it being a portal or like negative energy magnet, whatever you want to call it, mm-hmm. have you been in that area of Los Angeles? Which is like uh, Skid Row area. I don't think I. I mean, that's pretty no. far south. It's like in city, like LA. Like you've probably been on like LA, LX side, like Santa Monica side, right? Like mm-hmm. the Hollywood side. This part yeah. is like in like downtown LA, like kind of by the courthouse. Like it's down there, and uh, it's just like it's not just the Cecil. It's the whole area. Mm-hmm. It, so if it is a portal or a ley line. It would make sense because it's a good probably somewhere between five to ten blocks that just the area is not good. And it's just not yeah, good. Because I remember they were talking about like, yeah, this is the area you don't want to be in at night. <laughs> and don't want to be walking yep. around alone. Yeah, at producers night. will say if you fly in as your producers are like, so you don't want to go east of this or south of this. One time I accidentally drove into Compton by myself and I was in like a convertible. Oh, no. I'm this blonde and convertible. I'm like, hey, guys, what's going on? I'm in Compton all of a sudden. I don't know. How did I get in Compton? I don't know how I got to Compton. Like, literally. They're like, so, get out, get out. <laughs> literally. Wrong turn, guys. This is not, this is not good. Um, but, yeah, with the, with the Cecil. So it does make you wonder if just a couple of, like, one or two blocks away, um, you're having this thing of, of unlimited population of homelessness i don't know if skid row really existed then if it did it may not be as big as it is today obviously yeah but then you get transit people and Mm -hmm. the cecil was known for being like 19 dollars a night like how can you beat that like you can't even stay in vegas for that you know what i mean so you probably got people that were just desperate to go in and Like, I honestly think with Eliza, um, which was the girl that was found in the water tank, I think that, you know, she may have been having a mental health crisis in the same time that she was possessed. To me, she appeared possessed. And I think that, um, I do think it was a human that murdered her. Now, whether that human was possessed themselves or not, um, and I have more deets on that, too, for my other video. It's like, that's a whole... Elfie and I could sit here for 10 hours if you let us, okay? Like, it's really bad. Between the elevator video and then also just the fact of, like, being able to lift that lid and, and all that stuff, there, there's something just doesn't add up. Oh, what do you think? Did you, did you research the elevator game? I know this wasn't on the list, so she may not have, but did you re- research the elevator game? I could look into it because, like, I remember we Ooh, talking. Ooh, I want to like, know what you think. Game. Ooh, like, I, what? What do you think? I want to know what you think about it. I want to know what you think about it. It's creepy. It's a creepy. Like <laughs> it's like, creepy. Okay, elevators are creepy at the beginning because I've been in some old elevators that are like creaking that as they go mm-hmm. up, they're about they sound like they're about to fall as it is. So it's like, oh, let's add another layer to that, shall we? Mm-hmm. <laughs> no, I think and honestly, I think elevators are portals for sure. Like and stairways, those are two areas I think for sure. Not all of them, but I do think some do. You know, mimic it. Um, well, the energy. I mean, especially when you get the the stairways going up and down. You know, people. Mm-hmm up and down and the energy flow and everything exactly just doing whatever they're doing back in the back and everything some of the so, most like yeah. predominant paranormal experiences i have ever had i've mm-hmm. been like alone or like with family or friends and it's in hallways 
And it doesn't even have to be a creepy oh, hallway, yeah. but like stairs, like stairways. And it, it yeah. is. I think it's this constant energy flow that like creates this sort of like portal magnet thing. And it is weird. Same with the elevators. You have a metal box, like yeah. literally, that you're standing in. Like, I don't know how much more of a portal you want. Like, it's literally a portal. And it's powered mm -hmm. by electricity, which is EMFs. And it just goes up and down and up and down. Like, I mean, it's it's an actual portal. Now, I, I went on a, a forum... Uh, don't I don't recommend this because I was literally on said forum for like maybe two hours like reading everybody's comments because <laughs> I was like going down a dark hole but oh, no. there were people some people were saying like oh the elevator game doesn't work if you do it with more than one person and then some people were saying it does work and then some people were actually talking about what happened to them when they like got to the other side I guess I don't know Jeez. Now, when you read the directions of the elevator game, a concern I had mm. was they, they did not give Zach the full directions. <laughs> oh, did they give like him like the short notes? Like, yeah, they did. Speakers? They gave him like <laughs> like a quarter to half of the notes, and I was like, if he would have gotten stuck up there <laughs> and his phone wasn't working, he would have had no idea how to return home. Like, like actually, it's so bad. So I don't know what PA was on set that day, but you need to, like, let that let that person go. You know what I'm saying? Because he could have gotten stuck in a different realm. Um, do you think the elevator game... You need game, the out. <laughs> you need to be able to have the out. Yeah, like, they had the, like, how to do it. But they didn't give him the directions on how to return. <laughs> like, jeez, I was like, oh my god. They're probably like, it's Zach. You can figure it out. Yeah, he'll be, he'll be fine. Well, it's be fine. it says when you reach the top floor, like if it works and you're on the elevator with this girl or whatever, that you reach. It's like a parallel universe essentially, and it looks like dark and like the lights are out, but you see like a glowing red cross like in the distance. And I was like, yeah, and if Zach would have seen that, he'd have been like, ooh, pretty glowing red demonic cross. Gotta go towards the light. And, like, no one ever would like, have heard. No. <laughs> Nobody would have heard from him again. It would have been over. Because <laughs> he didn't have the return I, directions. I would have been hanging up on so fast going, oh, hell no. Nope. Mm -mm. See, now, I I'm would I would have tried it, but I would have made someone go with me <laughs> just to make sure. Like, I just need to make sure. Yes. You but need the buddy system. It, <laughs> it's true. System. It is so true. <laughs> Um, okay, should we talk about Slender Man? Because I feel like this is this is definitely a dark hole one, like for sure. Yeah, we could totally get into Slender Man. <sighs> I mean, it's just like there's, <laughs> we could talk for hours a little more on like blocked out and all the cases, and also just the fact like going down the rabbit hole. How many fictional books have been written because of that character? It's true. Because of the the whole case and everything. It's, like, it's oh my so goodness. true. It's so true. I mean. And not only that, spinoffs, too. Like, you think of anything, crime TV, crime shows. And then you, you go into the Slender Man, and they have all these movies, films they've done about it. And then they have games. Oh, you yeah. and I were looking into the computer app games that they have. Like, the one thing I want to say with Slender Man is that everybody that has gotten involved with it has made, like, a killing financially on, like, kind of you know, taking money off the empire because it has become such, like, a thing, you know? I mean, if you look at it, it was a very simple framework to start off with. Mm -hmm. And then you just kind of throw a few more things on it. You can really build from there. So it wasn't, like, very complex to begin with. I mean, it started off with two photos, I mm -hmm. think it was. Two photos. And it's like... Here, have fun. <laughs> they think the author, the guy that started it, which I have his name somewhere, but I have I have notes for my notes because they actually call him Slindy is what his name is. His, oh, his nickname yeah. is Slindy to people that really love him. Um, they think that the original author that started it was basing uh, the writings off of H.P. Lovecraft um, out of one of his story-like creations, which is interesting because... If you're a, a you know a pair person, you love H.P. Lovecraft, obviously. Um, Slender Man. So he was developed or created in 2009 yeah. by this guy. The author is, I guess, it would be considered a ghost writing name. His name is Victor Surge. So nobody really knows who really started it. But the guy named Victor Surge started in 2009. The Slender Man, he's depicted as a thin, unnaturally tall humanoid with featureless head, so no face, no eyes, no mouth, and um, a face that's wearing, like, a tall suit and, like, a black hat. 
So yeah, I just love this. Like literally, I could just I just love this story. Like Elfie and I were touching base before we got live, and it's like. She said, she's like, I went down a dark hole and I could have gone so many different directions with it. And it's so true. So he starts out as a fictional character. But, you know, as we know, there was like the actual Slender Man, you know, attempted murder that happened in Wisconsin. So the question is, is that if you get potentially millions of people um, across the world believing in this fictional entity... Does he become real? I mean, what do you think, Elfie? I think... This this is very interesting, because, like... I've been a huge fan of, like, thought forms, and, and the concept of thought forms, and the poor guy's idea in the paranormal, but because of just the idea of us being able to basically generate our own ghosts. And this thing has been going on for, like, almost a decade now Mm -hmm. and you have so many people putting so much energy and obsession essentially into this character and it started off like I said very simple framework Mm -hmm. and just has been building up on top of that Mm -hmm. so I could totally see the possibility the only problem I ever see is like every time we see videos of like Slender Man caught a video it's just another CGI yeah scenario yeah I don't I don't know if I really believe the quote found footage that's on there. Now, I watch it because I just love it. Like, even if it's CGI, like, I want to see it because I just love creepy stuff. But, you know, Kat and I have had this theory um, getting Ghost Girl Diary signed. We would love to go to the actual forest that he supposedly resides in, which is in Wisconsin. That was what was written, like, through this whole era of Slender Man. I think that if you went into the forest, obviously no expectations of actually seeing him, maybe other than a shadow, I do think that you would get, like, EVPs of, quote, whoever the Slender Man is, because I think that many people have created this character, and so I think on an energetic level, he exists somewhere. And by the way, like, Elfie and I, we're researching it. People are still building onto the Slender Man, like, like book or whatever like what is this called like an endless novel i'm not even sure and it's actually that's why i find fascinating because he is an internet creation and Mm -hmm. with the internet it's like you just keep can layer and layer and layer and layer and sometimes that makes it a little more difficult because like you said creepy pasta you're not sure it's origin that we are as close as we can be compared to others Mm -hmm. but oh my god we suddenly got like static or that uh, electric interference in Mm -hmm. the woods, I'd be like, okay. (laughs) Do you think that he, whoever he is, is created, like, because they say he has tentacles and, like, that's how he grabs you or what, like, there's a lot of theories. Some, Some say he has wings. So do you think this fictional character is now considered, like, a demon character? Or just, like, a non-human character? I would probably put him more into a non-human like the tentacles I can see where they, they probably get the idea that the author created from the H.P. Lovecraft because of like the whole Cthulhu and mm-hmm. the also the interdimensional being of him because with H.P. Lovecraft it was always a mix of either demonic or actually just interdimensional monsters that drove you insane and that seemed to be his bag of tricks was him luring children and then kind of drive them nuts and getting them to do things or just taking them away entirely. Yeah, sort of like puppetry. Like, he's puppeting these kids to do his dirty work, in a sense. Um, And that even talks about, you know, going into the case where the girl... So two girls lured another girl into the forest, claiming that they were being told by, quote, Slindy to um, create this, like, heinous murder, and that was how, essentially, they showed their, uh, which is very satanic, honestly, is, like, doing a human sacrifice to show my my power to you or I'm giving myself to you. It's, it's essentially a human sacrifice. So I can see where people can see the satanic slash demonic side of it. Um, but I really think he, he's just something that developed, I think it's a very earthly plane thing, of an energy that was literally something that went viral and then turned real. Like, literally, the internet went viral with all of this energy, like, millions of people, and created it. 
And this girl, um, she the, the girl got away, essentially. If you haven't seen the Slenderman documentary that's based on a real story, it was an HP do- HBO document. It was so good. It was so good. Mm-hmm. Um, she The girl got away from the other two girls, but the other two girls were charged with attempted murder. One got off a little bit easier than the other, but the other girl was um, sent to a mental institution where she was diagnosed with schizophrenia. And um, a lot of people were like, oh... It was caused by the Slender Man. The Slender Man gave her schizophrenia. But if you listen to the documentary, she has several family members, generationally speaking, that have the same mental illness. So, unfortunately, she pr- just probably wasn't treated with it. Now, do I think that, like, she claims still today, even medicated, that the Slender Man visits her in dreams and, like, visits her. I still do believe that. I do believe that. I think it, it's like paranormal. All paranormal is a revolving door. You open the door once, it doesn't shut. Mm-hmm. You open the door to experiencing Slenderman, whether that's through like summoning. Like you and I were talking about, these people are in their houses. Like you've, you've watched videos where it went viral. These people claiming that they summoned in the Slenderman and now they have like wicked poltergeist activity through their house because of it. I think, well, unfortunately, I think with them, it, they be they hyper fixated on this figure because when it happened, it was like at the peak of the internet interest of the Slender Man, and mm-hmm. I think sadly a lot of these people use this character as a escape because, mm-hmm. like, with them, they they decide to sacrifice a friend because they felt like if they did this, this proved their loyalty to Slender Man and then he would take them away to his house in the woods mm-hmm. and they just had this this need to it, it was almost like a Peter Pan moment of like we want to go somewhere else that's not where we, we feel bad right now mm-hmm. essentially well even like you mentioned earlier Pied Piper sort of vibes too of like he is the leader we must do and follow what the leader says type of thing. Another one um, that I found, I was kind of comparing when I was researching this is these people on the internet, if you go on these forums, like there's like some literal like hardcore like Slender Man fans. Like I'm talking like, you know how like we like like ghosts and like dead people? Like these people are like the same with Slender Man to the point where I'm just going to say it. It's a little culty. It's a little bit like a cult. Because, like, they, they may not have done, like, quote, sacrifices, but they truly, they believe this energy is real. Not all of them have ne- necessarily summoned it in, but it almost makes whoever is that obsessed with it feel a sense of belonging. Is that what yeah. you got from it, from reading the, like, seeing everything, too? I think, I think it's, it's the sense of belonging. I think it's, it's unfortunately, that escapism, because... From the looks of it, the the the, the age dynamic, dynamic is usually preteens to teens, and they're already going through a lot as it is. Mm-hmm. And here's this focal point that they can use to latch onto, and this figure that could either help them take them away from all their troubles, mm-hmm. or get rid of what they feel is trouble. Mm-hmm. I agree. And I agree. My hyper focus on and why they want him so bad to be real. Well, and that's part of like the cult mentality as well, because I mean, most official official cults are, um, oh, what's the word I'm looking for? Older people or older generations, right? And then most of the people that follow Slenderman are usually like young, like Elfie was saying, younger generations of like preteens teens who are in that like awkward hormonal stage but either way when you look at a cult it's like um i i follow this person because my home life is so damaged or because i don't have family or i don't have friends and i feel like i don't have a sense of belonging so that's where i I need to go and then the cult leader to them is this slender man and they're like i'm gonna do everything i can to like show my loyalty and love to him and so it does make sense to me when I see these forums of where some people say yes it's culty yes it's like it's a little satanic yes it's a little bit like these girls like doing a sacrifice can you I can't even imagine 
luring my friend like cat like <laughs> cat would follow me anyway though like if i went to a haunted wood cat would be like let's go no but um i can't imagine luring your friend into the woods like with the with the preparation of of like stabbing them to death you know like it's just but like you said these people that are getting involved with it are in a very vulnerable state of mind yeah and i and think that like not like when there's that loss between differentiation between fantasy and reality i think that's why like in the case the one is is in an institution now getting help and got the the brunt of the the conviction because i think she was the one who was adamant like we're going to do this and then her friend who helped I think hesitated like she wasn't Mm -hmm. quite sure like are you sure we're doing this when they acted and everything well thank god somebody had a brain because it's like well and then the one girl she did get stabbed the one girl that was um, diagnosed with schizophrenia is the one the only one that did the actual act of like the stabbing Mm -hmm. once again and and the the girl barely survived from what it sounded like there were like a few wounds on her that any closer would have actually like hit her heart so mm-hmm. she was very lucky that she was able to get away and find someone who could help because there were like multiple wounds on her and everything just it's amazing to me that she even escaped because i mean really how far weren't they like 13 years old or something like that somewhere in that age range theoretically how far can you get you know, like, if you're, like, they said, like, we're walking into the woods, we're going to escape, and then after we do the sacrifice, we're going to go find Slender Man's house. Theoretically, like, I mean, I remember being a 13, 14-year-old, and I'd walk, like, a mile, and I'd be like, I'm exhausted. Like, I need to sit down. <laughs> like, I need a break. Like, so theoretically, how far could they have gotten? So thank God they didn't get very far, because I don't think that, so apparently the, the girl that was stabbed ran out onto a road and just happened to see a car passing by and they stopped and helped her she's very that would talk about divine timing like if you don't think divine timing doesn't exist oh yeah no she 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 really liked that there was someone there to help her whoa she was lucky she was lucky well and i also think that if you is everything all right turn off these audio ones okay like the batteries designed to on me a bit. I'm fighting with it. Are you? Don't mind. Okay. Uh, if you need if you need a break or whatever, I can give you one or five. But um, I'm I'm looking back at the HP Lovecraft thing. Um, somebody claimed they came forward in an interview as huh. Victor Surge. Now, once again, uh-huh. can we believe him? Now, Victor Surge was the supposed um, initial author that started the Slender Man. I don't. I mean. How how can you believe what this guy's saying? You don't really know if that's him. You know what I mean? Like, it may have just taken off to a point where somebody came forward and like, oh, I did so good. Like, I'm gonna take all the credit for Slender Man. You know? Yeah, I think he was the one who who claimed that he would he uh, did the the photoshopping of the pictures and had the little bit of writing. Mm-hmm. Apparently, the writing underneath it was like just that extra bit that was needed for to kick off the story and everything. He said um, H.P. Lovecraft was his uh, number one influence, which is interesting because in a couple of weeks, Elfie and I are going to talk about the Necronomicon because everybody, (laughs) yeah, it's going to be good. It's going to be a good one, so you got to wait for that. But I also hope that we can bring in a couple other characters from H.P. Lovecraft and other writings because I think H.P. Lovecraft literally had a shoe in with the other side. I don't know how you feel about it. I... I've actually started looking because I've only read a little bit of him, but what I find very fascinating is the fact that the, this is such like a huge world he built, mm-hmm. and it didn't become he didn't become really famous with it until after his death. Mm-hmm. And from what I heard, he actually didn't really believe in the cult and weird stuff and everything. So to him to build that world. And everyone kind of work off of that and him being like, eh, it's not really. Well, he's had I'm roommates fine. from college come forward that said when he would do some of his writings, mm-hmm. he would be staring into a closet and he would swear he was seeing things come out of it or like a world in the closet. And they oh. said he would trance out and that he the next day they would ask him about it and he'd be like, I don't, I don't know what you're talking about. I don't remember. So it's just interesting. So I think, like, there was points where... Thank you guys so much for the bits. We appreciate you. They're cheering for us, Elfie. Woohoo! Um, But... 
character to begin with, like his his history, like just looking at his bio alone is just like not even look at the stories, but his bio alone is just like he was a odd duck to begin with. Oh, he was. Well, so was Edgar Allan Poe. But like we. We are also odd ducks, which is why we like them. You know what I mean? Like, but it's true. It's interesting how they could create such a strange occult world. And but at the time, they were not successful writers. Like, they didn't really become successful till way after, like you know, 19th century when their stuff started becoming more popular. Like after mm-hmm. they died. So it's interesting how that happens. Like I think Edgar Allan Poe died like extremely poor and broke. And he was really sick, and he, like, died in his house, like, alone. He was, like, only had enough money for bread. And here he is, this, like, phenomena now of, like, everybody knows who Edgar Allan Poe is. So Mm -hmm. it seems to have that same path with writers. So this guy, um, the Victor Surge, who was the writer of um, The Slender Man, or at least the essential beginning of Slender Man, he also said that he was um, influenced by Stephen King, especially his short stories and um, he loved Silent Hill and Resident Evil and he said that his biggest um, other influence was Zach Parsons The Insidious Beast Stephen King's short story The Mist Mm -hmm. Um, and he also liked reading The Rake he also was really into the Mothman and he said that was the motivation behind creating like this Slender Man the Terror um, he wanted to make it like the Slender Man did, never directly kills his victims. Instead, he encourages others to, like, give them orders. And, like, by ordering them to murder and, like, it pleases him. Once <laughs> again, culty. <laughs> Soft kind of boss. <laughs> it is. It is. I mean, and that's where it can start to get really dark. So, what do you think about these people who are in their houses who are, like, literally doing witchcraft and and summoning. (laughs) Which, let me just... Okay, let's just pause for a minute, okay? I can't sit here and lie and say I haven't done, like, summoning ritual rituals or witchcraft rituals because I have participated in all of the above, okay? But, like, there's some people online, if you research it, they're, like, I would call them, like, baby witches or, like, people that have no idea what they're doing. And, like, you know... been doing it too the whole baby witch everything the it, it is it's a very like baby witch where you're like they're like oh we're gonna summon the slender man we're gonna summon the slender man and then but they're like oh he, it may not happen it's gonna be fine and then like five seconds they're like oh shit like it worked like <laughs> you know what i mean like what if it works so like maybe you should be like what do you do in the aftermath that it actually does work like i feel like people like zach going on the elevator he should have researched the elevator game himself and made sure he had the full directions. What if he would have made it to, like, the other po- other side with the portal? How would he have gotten home? You know, like, you, you have to be prepared. That's the baby witch idea of, like, when you're summoning things or, like, pr- practicing in ritual spells. Like, do you have the closing part, too? Or did you forget, like, you need to research how to close the spell or how to end a summons or... If you do summon something into your house, how do you get rid of it? Like, it's just like, what do you think of, of those viral videos? I, I, uh, that's usually, okay. So, like, I, if you didn't already guess, uh, when it comes to magic and, and witchcraft and so many things, like, usually, like, I have no problem with the people new to it learning right off the bat, like, mm-hmm. in your first book. But usually it's good to first learn how to, like, close and clean up before you start poking things and i probably wouldn't say slender man would be the first one you want to play oh thank you 100 percent, 100 percent. that probably would be the the first tryout like yeah let's do this i mean i'm semi-experienced and i don't even know if i would be summoning in slender man personally you know what i mean like and it is because i think they're like oh it's a joke it's funny we're just going to summon in the Slender Man. And then all of a sudden they're having, if you guys research it on YouTube, there's a ton of people and they, they've, they're they filming poltergeist activity in their house. Like literally things are, and I believe that it's real, but they're scared mm. and freaked out because they, they, they have now an energy in their house. Another thing with summoning that you have to be safe with is 
when you go to summon something or talk to something, you don't know if that's actually what you summoned. It, something else could have stepped in in his place. You know what I'm saying? That's that's the exact thoughts I have. Because just because you're saying that I'm summoning Slenderman, and even if Slenderman has become some sort of thought form of some kind, doesn't necessarily mean if it falls within the same parameters of summoning any kind of spirits or beings or anything. So when you go and you cast your circle and you summon what you think is Slenderman, you're not sure what you're actually bringing in. Because it's similar to like, okay, I have no problem with spirit boards. Mm -hmm. As long as you like open the door and close the door. Same. And mm -hmm. Do the process properly. See you guys, <laughs> Ouija, Elfie is a pro here. Okay, she just said she believes the same way I do. Ouija boards, I, that is Hollywood getting in your head. It is the same as a Mel meter. It's the same thing as an EMF meter. You're still connecting with them. You just need to open it properly, trust who you're working with it, and close it properly. Now, yeah. if you, like, talk to a demon and you just, like, pick up the board and you're like, okay, bye, demon, get out of my house, like, that's not how it works. You know what I mean? Like, that's not how it works. So, like, these people who, like, oh, my God, I used the Ouija board once and it was so bad. Yeah, it probably was because I doubt you closed the session properly. You know what I mean? Like, and boundaries with your house. Don't summon something in that you don't know how to get out. Oh, yeah. I mean, and it's, it's I mean, in some ways it's almost similar to, like, like, do you, do you have boundaries of your house? Do you really want to call something in your house that then you will have to... 100%. ...in your house? Because just because you tell it go away doesn't mean it will go away. <laughs> I wish. Like, that's how I feel about my neighbors the last few days using a jackhammer. Can you just, like, go <laughs> away? Can you just, like, stop? <laughs> so No, but it's true. It's, it's the same thing, like... It's like inviting an unwanted visitor in your house, like maybe a, a, an annoyed mother-in-law that you don't like. Like, it's the same as the Slender Man. You're, you're essentially letting it come in, and just because you tell it to go doesn't mean it's going to happen. And it's crazy to me that it's so... But, you know, then you get involved with if you're trying to expunge it from your house, you're talking about sage rituals possible you know exorcism salt rims around the house i mean you could go on and on about it but people never for some reason get their research to that point and i feel like that's like a really big step that people are missing here like you know you can be a skeptic fine summon it in fine but what if it does work, then what are you going to do? You know what I mean? And these people are just freaking out about it. There was an interesting story I saw um, on TV the other day. And it was, why am I laughing? I feel like, I feel bad. I laugh when people get trauma from poltergeist because I'm like, well, why are you letting it follow you then, you know? But this guy was like, he had all of this evidence and like, it was real. Like, he was scared. He'd had like um, a kidney transplant. And I'm like, why hasn't this guy gotten, like, an, a priest in there? Like, why, what are you doing? You know, like, he moved houses. It was still following him. He has evidence. Take it to the archdiocese. Like, what are you? And he's like, I've just gotten to the point where I'm just, I'm, I'm living with it. I'm like, you've had a kidney transplant, boo. I think at this point we, we need to call in for some Jesus. Like, quite literally, you know what I mean? <laughs> Jeez. That start setting some ground rules you'll be like okay so since you're not paying rent we're going to have some rules here it's you don't so want true i do not so how ground do you hand do you have you been followed home before and if you have how do you handle it i'm not sure actually i mean i have stuff in my house but i'm pretty like chill with it so something probably i'm chill with it elvie's like i like my ghost like you know they're my they're my ghost roomies they're cool actually like as long as they follow the rules, as long as they don't cause trouble, as long as they, they, they are polite and everything, fine. But right. as soon as they start causing trouble, it's like, you're out of here. Right. And also, I ward my house. <laughs> I know better. I ward my house. I do, too. I to re yep. can is done. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yep, I do the same. I do salt rims around the house and sage rims. And I, yeah, I'm like, I'm very... I do a little spell around my house because I get followed home and sometimes you have to redo it and redo it again, you know? So oh, it, yeah. it is, it, it's dangerous when people mess with things that they don't know how to control or, <sighs> I don't know. What, so what did you think of some of the poltergeist activity on those videos? 
with Slenderman. I think. Oh, no. I. Do you think they're I'm idiots? Not... <laughs> you think they're idiots? <laughs> I'm sorry. I I can see. Okay, so if we're going in the idea of of people generating their own ghosts, I could see them generating it to themselves of like, yeah, I totally got Slenderman and, and crap happening, <gasps> right? And everything. They probably could be just feeding into it and front loading themselves of like, yeah, this is totally stuff going on and generating their own entity to make this happen. Mm -hmm. And most of the time people are like, I don't know what to do. It's like, you just clear it out, make rules, start charging at rent. Yeah, truth. Truth. I, um, oh, we have Kat mentioned about Zozo too. Um, I'm just making sure I'm catching up on, I know, Zozo, oh man, that was 2020, that was, we're not gonna go backwards, okay, we're, we're moving forward, <laughs> all of 2020 was Zozo, okay, like, the whole year, we saw a brief glimpse about a week ago, and we're just, we're just done with it right now, but, um, yes, I agree, so Slender, or not Slender Man, but Poltergeist activity, in my opinion, can also be caused by energy that you're emitting yourself, 100%. And now, I'm not saying it's not Slenderman or maybe a combination of both, but I know somebody personally, very personally, who's actually on this stream right now who creates her own poltergeist activity, and her name is Kat. She does it a lot. Like, if she gets, like, she's an Aries, so she's, like, really fired up, you know what I mean? Like... If something triggers her the wrong way, in, in, in my house and in her house, like, when she comes to visit, she'll stay, like, a month or two at a time. But yeah. she'll be walking through the house. If something sets her off, her Aries just goes through the roof. And, like, we've had cabinets open and shut and then, like, doors <laughs> slam shut by themselves. And, like, I remember she'll, like, walk over, like, oh, my God, like, did something follow us home? And I'm, like... I just think maybe like a meditation session, um, maybe like, maybe like a little bit of sage, like <laughs> I just think so, but it's true. Yep. Like people don't realize how powerful your own energy is, you know? So we're going to learn some shielding, containing, and centering, and grounding here. <laughs> <laughs> it's so true. It's so true. No, I don't, Kat just said the pots and pans go flying sometimes. Thank God that hasn't happened in my house. <laughs> Put a little bubble around it. <laughs> uh, like, like, really grounding bubble. No, um, and I mean that's. Around and bubble around it. <laughs> so, what were some of the dark holes that you saw with Slenderman? It's just like all the like trying what it, it was going down all the paths trying to figure out where he originated because most of them went with the whole the, the guy in the two thousand nine, and then all the games that like there were like multiple games like one after the other. And there are all the creepy games where you remember from the early 2000s that were like um, similar to Silent Hill and Resident Evil of the walking around with a flashlight and barely see anything. Mm -hmm. And the noises getting louder and louder as you're looking for pieces of paper and then suddenly Slender mm -hmm. pops out of nowhere. And I'm just like, oh my God, I remember these so much. <laughs> it's true, but it's amazing. Like they have created an, a financial empire off of this fictional character. Like, this is way before FNAF and everything. <laughs> uh-huh. Yeah, I mean, it's just, I was, there are literally, I think I saw 20 or 30 games for PC and apps. I don't know if they're all still of existence, but that's a lot, guys. Oh, 20 yeah. or 30 games based on this fictional character, that, you know what I mean? And once again, like, I've talked about this theory from the Stanley Hotel when my, my old friend Callie worked there. She created this um, child image that was in... You Have you been to Stanley? You've been there, haven't you? Oh, yeah. Okay, so this wasn't the actual, like, main hotel or the presidential suite. It's another section that's kind of behind the presidential suite. And it's, like, the admin building. So she was doing tours in there. And that building actually was not haunted at all. It wasn't really haunted at all. But what mm. she did was she started a story for her tours of a little girl haunted this building. And what she did was she sort of played the telephone game. So she would bring people in, tell them the story, and then people would say, oh, I felt this, or oh, I smell this, or this. And then pretty soon, her and I started doing actual investigations in the building, and we got the evidence that the people had created from this character that did not exist previously. Dude, you played the film. 
And literally her and I were just sitting, like, we didn't even have to do anything. We're sitting there with recorders and, like, all of our equipment's going off. We're like, and this building was not haunted before. We got little girl voices on digital recorders. Like, so once again, going back to Slender Man, and that was only with a few hundred people. Imagine millions, thousands putting their energy into Slender Man. I, my, like, ultimate goal would be to go to that forest, and um, a cat said that my camera is going in and out of focus. That's weird because this is a new camera, so it shouldn't be doing that. So that's interesting. But I would, well, I'm going to have Slender Man visit me in my dreams tonight. Great. I can't wait. <laughs> well, I, th- I think the thing, too, is, is the difference, too, is that they're working off of the stand hotel with a, with a already kind of battery to work off of. Yeah. Oh, and yeah. It, the crystals so, underneath and the geodes and the mines, 100%. Yep. Like, Lori had, like, some slight hauntings in the main part of the hotel, but then you build off of that and, like, kind of pull the energy into a not so and create the story. And especially if you tell it in such a way of believability, like, people are just going to add to that and put their own energy and just keep it going and everything. And usually with thought forms, I think it's most of the time it's consistency. Like, mm-hmm. if the story doesn't change too much, if you can retell it over and over again and just kind of almost keep going over that same line until there's a nice groove in it and everything, mm-hmm. that is more likely to appear than just a one-off story that just fades into nothing. Mm-hmm. I agree. I totally agree with that statement, 100%. Some people are saying that they heard a woman's voice come through on my microphone. Oh, <laughs> Elfie just laughs. <laughs> oh, oh, well. Something happened. No, nothing I haven't dealt with before. You know what I'm saying? Like, it, like, never fails. Every time I film, like, like not this, like, but pre-recording for YouTube, whether it's Ghost Girl Diaries or, like, Creeps and Cosmetics, without fail, uh-huh. every time, I'm sitting there and I'm like, just let me get through this video, please. Like, I really need to film this. Like, I don't have six hours. Like, I understand that you want to be here, but, like, I really need to just, like, get this going, you know? (laughs) Every time I feel like it just, whatever I'm talking about just, like, summons it in. Oh, some people are saying, is it the Black Dahlia? Hmm, interesting. That poor bitch, man. That's a rough way to go. I hope she didn't feel anything when that happened. Like, woo. Uh, fought i hope she fought every every moment of the way i hope she fought him well in the 40s too like women were taught to be so like prim and proper and like you can just tell by her photography of her photos she was like definitely the pinup you know what i mean like she was the pinup girl and she was gorgeous like striking and so who knows if somebody happened to dip in to find her and and just decided they wanted to keep them keep her for themselves eternally essentially you know whether it was oh, the, yeah. the doctor or not i'm not sure i hate to point fingers after death and here's why because they've done it with lizzie borden and i'm not saying that it didn't happen you know what i mean the lizzie borden thing is they have done supposed like psychics have come in and they've done a lot of um, seances and Ouija board sessions, and they're saying that Lizzie has come forward and um, and other people that the the father was like molesting her, and that mm-hmm. was why she butchered him. And I just I don't know. It's I feel like that's a really brash, allegedly you know like afterlife. And I feel and same with like this guy with the black dahlia. I'm not saying it didn't happen. I think it's a great theory that this doctor was the one that murdered her. I just feel like they're not here in this life to represent themselves. What if they didn't do it? Wouldn't you feel bad if you're accusing someone of, like, literally slicing somebody in half? So I guess that's me playing victim or devil victim's advocate. <laughs> I mean, technically, that's right, too, right? Like, technically, I am the victim's advocate for the dead. That's, that's who I represent. <laughs> Jesus. I think what well, I find interesting is that the, the son is so adamant. And he's like, I know my dad did. I know it because he wrote a whole book and everything. And it's just like, there there was some weird stuff with the doctor, apparently. Like, his house, there, he had some strange parties. There was fringe stuff. There was weird stuff going on. And I think unless there's, like, unless there's hardcore evidence, mm-hmm. like, he was a suspect. Mm-hmm. It's one of those, it's kind of hard. Until there's evidence comes out, like, yes, 100% sure, we're not... We can only speculate, really, mm-hmm. of, like, 
this possibility. But when you look at the crime scene itself and what happened to her, it's like it was definitely a crash, a a, a crime of passion. Like yeah. there, it was not. And also, in some ways, it's like it makes you wonder: like, was this person's first time? Right. Like, I don't think that maybe it was their not their first kill because they were very precise in how they did it and how to make sure there was no evidence and everything to connect towards them and then they taunt the police and the media and everything with the letters and everything. Mm -hmm. I know, it's really, there's some of those cases, paranormal or just true crime, that just stand out to you because Mm -hmm. they're so different and to me the Black Dahlia is one for sure because the way the murder happened where we don't know, and and honestly like my, my true crime brain just goes when I like, I talk and like think about that crime happening and even if she was in a tub and she was murdered in the tub which you know drained her of of, you know what was in her body and they they still had to pick her up piece by piece put Mm -hmm. her in the trunk of a car whatever like how did one do that how does one do that did they put a tarp down did they just not give a shit you know like how did they do that they just put her in piece by piece and like took her to a field and they're like this is a good spot we're just gonna and then when they take her out do they like just throw the piece like and she didn't look like she was thrown she looked like she was placed so it was was yeah it was weird it's weird man like Murderers are weird. Murderers are weird. What's your favorite um, paranormal murderer, whether it be John Wayne Gacy or um, Richard Ramirez, or like, do you have do you have a favorite one? Um, not via <laughs> their crimes, by the way. I don't mean like, ooh, I love that crime. I just mean like one that just sparks your interest more than the others. I would definitely be in the field of the, the whole Jack the Ripper stuff, just because I swear every five years or so, someone has come out with a book of, like, we have solved the case. Mm-hmm. We have figured out who it is. We know who it is now. It's like, you sure you have. Okay. <laughs> so my friend, it's interesting you brought that. My friend is a um, detective in the UK, and he has access to the original case files. Oh, so yeah. he has told me that nobody mm-hmm. has ever taken the time to take the case files and, like, actually try to trace them with, like, modern day, like, you know what I mean? Like, being in a modern day. So him and I have always said that when I get a series, I'm going to go over there, he's going to give me the case files, and he's going to go with me as the, like, detective, and I'm going to go as the paranormal investigator, and we're going to see if we can, like, take take the trip of like Jack the Ripper and like walk the footsteps because he thinks you could figure out who it is but he goes nobody has ever just taken the time to, to really do it in like the modern day because he goes all these other cases come you know every day there's crime there's crime every day that you have to deal with um my favorite would have to be which honestly they're not years ago I would have said a different answer but mm-hmm. Ed Gein Oh, yeah. Because I think he is misunderstood. And I know that sounds dark. I'm not standing up for a murderer. I think that he's just very misunderstood. Um, I think that his persona created celebrity-wise, um, you know, with, like, the Chainsaw Massacre, like, all the Psycho, all these movies that were made about him, oh, portrays yeah, yeah. him to be this, like, really powerful overbearing guy and he's gonna take you and he's gonna skin you and eat you you know what i mean but when you (laughs) interact with his actual energy it's like itty bitty living space like it's literally like like the genie on aladdin you know you're like phenomenal cosmic power like itty bitty living space like he's just not like that and he still tries to be very like powerful and like overwhelming in person you know like because i've been to zach have you been to zach's museum yet no. Oh my gosh, <laughs> you have to come out here and we'll go. Oh my god, um, but and then the other one that actually shocked me um, that mm. is very powerful and I I get I mean I I guess I assumed he was already powerful, but mm. being in the presence of his items because Zach has purchased many of his items, the Kansas mm. City Killer. Um, 
he's the guy that he's the murderer that would abduct young men and he would um, sodomize them and and like chain them up for weeks before he would kill them. Wait, was it that the was that the BTK? Guy? Yes, yes, BTK. Yeah, he um, he's just. On, I'm going to be honest, I think the BTK energy is darker than the Dybbuk box. Mm. I think it's darker than Peggy the Haunted Doll. Like, I've been around everything in that museum five or eight times, more than that. And mm-hmm. the BTK energy is just... I mean, I don't think he's demonic, but I've been around demonic energy. But the BTK energy is like, he just doesn't give a shit. Like... He would, like, slice and dice you without even thinking about it. Like, he just literally just gave no 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 Fs whatsoever. So that was interesting being around that kind of en- energy because I've even been around Manson's ashes. I'm going to mm-hmm. be honest, too. Like, being around Manson's stuff, like, it's the same thing as Ed Gein. Yeah. People have talked about, oh, Manson was, like, the cult leader behind. And I'm not saying he's not responsible for, for the murders. But, like, you get around his ashes and stuff, and you're like, he did leave his face again. You're just like, he was kind of a nobody that became somebody, and that's what made him feel powerful. You know what I mean? Well, he knew how, he knew how, like, he was not a big guy from my ear. Like, he was a, he was a short man, but he knew how to present this aura about him. Like, he knew mm-hmm. how to radiate a, a sense of power, and he knew just what to say to get someone's attention and to hold their their attention and everything and i think maybe also with like the bk uh, btk <laughs> yep tk guy and all them i think probably what's so disturbing or why it feels even more disturbing with those items of them is because they are they are from human beings that they are from people and the idea of a person because when we think when we think spirits or, or or negative spirits or anything like that. It's always like this other that we can put on a different level because it has different morals and ideas. But then when you deal with a human being mm-hmm. that has lived, that you could have walked past down the street and the idea that they could just do this to someone without even thinking twice about it just because they wanted to, mm-hmm. I think it's even more frightening mm-hmm. to like fun. Right, I agree. I agree completely. Yeah, he 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 got. Uh, how do I word this without t- too vulgar? Um, somehow Zach obtained the crime scene sheets to the bed set where some of the murders took place. Um, BTK is not dead. I don't. I don't know if it has to do with him being dead or not. It still has energy, right? I mean, it is. Oh, he could, yeah, there could still be I mean, there's still energy. Oh, yeah, like, it doesn't matter if he's dead or not for there not to be energy around that, BTK. I don't know if oh, he's yeah. dead or alive or not. Um, I've been around some, like, like uh, oddity stuff where it was, like, darker, and it's just, like, yeah, you looked at it going, like, that's nice, not touching Well, that. it's what's <laughs> weird, though, because, like, I mean, he has the crime sheets, so they're set up, like, in there, like, as a bed, um, so, and then, yeah, that's gross because, bleh, you know, like, you know what happened, but, um, when I'm in there, like, like, first of all, he <laughs> hates women because he was, he, he was raping men, you know what I mean? So he hates women, definitely doesn't want powerful women in there. And I'm, I was in there, he was like slam, like there was a door just like slamming me shut to get out of there. Like, it was like, I don't want you in here. It was like the most like forceful energy out of the whole place which is strange like and he is alive i just looked it up right now but still just just because he's alive doesn't mean that there can't be horrible energy surrounding those and his energy can't still be stuck to those items 100 percent um so yeah it's that room's that room was hard in fact he i i saw those items when zach got them before he put them on display he he asked me to come down and i he had them in this weird spare room and it was mm-hmm. one of those things where you, I didn't even know what it was, but I knew when I walked in the room. You know what I mean? Like, he didn't even tell me what it was yet, but you feel that energy, and it was that, like, ugh, like, mucky, thick, dark energy, and you're just like, damn, like, whatever this is is, like, really bad, like, really bad. Because even the Dybbuk box, the way that interacts is, I, I definitely yeah. think it's demonic, whatever that is. But honestly, Zach has created this, like, 
room that it loves and it just loves being there and that's just it and it's happy it, it that room looks like hell it's got like red lights and like um missing like wall boards and stuff it, it, it's comfortable there like it's home there <laughs> And there's like, I'm good here, leave me. Yeah, it's like, I'm good, leave me alone. Oh my gosh. Does anybody have any questions that you guys want to ask um, regarding like any of this, any of the stuff that we've chatted about? Um, I think this was a great stream though. I love these topics. Like you and I could just go down the rabbit hole for 42 oh. years <laughs> and just like, I love it. I do. I love this stuff. I mean, I was going down the rabbit hole with the true crime because it's like, it's interesting also just the true crime the 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 crossover between true crime and paranormal but the true crime community because you have the true crime fascination in the cases and then you got the the oddities dark stuff and then you got the you know, darker stuff and mm -hmm. everything and it just it it can go the whole spectrum of like there's there's the surface crime stuff like yay and then there's like the really dark stuff of like you will be scarred for life if you look at those photos. It's true. Well, that's where it comes in from, like, the balance of, like, oh, like, you should be afraid of demons, demons, darkness, Satan, all of Satan, you know, Satanism. I I can honestly say I've met humans that are much darker than, than demons. Like, human energy and real humans, for that matter, like, you know, like, oh. it doesn't matter, energetically speaking, what their title is. It can still be one worse than the other, you know? And I mean, for the example of Black Dahlia, I think that's purely truth, just considering she was just pe taken apart piece by piece, which is so, so strange. And okay. so Elfie will be back on with me in two weeks. Like I said, we're going to be talking about um, Necronomicon, which will be interesting, some of the characters in there, and the book itself. I think just talking about it being a cult, because, you know, some people say oh, the Necronomicon is, like, a satanic book, and it has, like, um, hidden uh, spells in it and things for, like, summoning. And then other people are like, no, it's just the world of, um, you know, H.P. Lovecraft. And, yeah, well, he was he was strange, too. And we're going to talk about some of his other characters. He was interesting. Interesting dude. I'm sure people say that about me. They're like, Crystal's an interesting chick, you know? She's real strange. Oh, it's like, tell with the Slender Man into then the thought form created with Slender Man into the thought form creations of H.P. Lovecraft's own characters and everything. I mean, like, if you put enough belief into something, you can, can you make it happen? Well, and then for H.P. Lovecraft to live on in Slender Man is like, mm -hmm. wow. Like, H if it did come from H.P. Lovecraft or stemmed, creatively speaking, amazing he's like eternally living on like quite literally slender man's gone on for 10 years and i don't think he's stopping anytime soon like it's still going it's still going so thank you elfie so so much for being here i appreciate you so much. i'm so glad we were finally able to do this after all these years oh no this is great i've definitely enjoyed this honestly like i i will happily nerd out on the paranormal and the weird stuff all day long <laughs> yes me too girl me too um make sure you guys subscribe to our channel make sure you guys follow elfie on social media it is at elfie music on um, instagram or if you follow who i'm following you can find her in there on her twitter and on her instagram um tune in for next week is going to be a good one Kat and I are going to be talking about female cult leaders. Ooh, that's going to be a good one. Except we're going to go into a real dark um, hole with that. And um, Elfie, once again, thank you so much. Thank you so, so much for being here. Um, I'll let, go ahead and let you go, Elfie, while I do my outro. Um, I, uh, yeah, it's been a really good, it's been a good stream. I'm really excited that I have Elfie coming on once in a while. She's awesome. Like I said, we've been friends for a while and finally we were able to do this. So make sure you follow all of us on social media. Stay up to date on um, future streams, like I said. Um, and if you guys have any questions or whatever, hit me up on social media as usual. Um, any topics you want to hear, make sure you hit us up on that. Um, go to Ghost Girl Diaries, Instagram or Facebook or YouTube's up and running, everybody. YouTube is up and running. That's my final announcement. People have been questioning me um, what I was planning on doing with YouTube. So I wanted to take a week from uh, or a couple weeks off from streaming and uh, uploading content to my lifestyle channel because I needed to get reorganized because I was really shocked to see that the Ghost Girl Diaries channel is back up and running. 
I know that I had mentioned before that it was gonna be, uh, I was gonna run a YouTube ad for the channel to see if it revived it. I didn't even have to run the ad. It just did it on its own. So I'm very great, I don't know. I don't know what happened. I'm very grateful. I'm happy to be back. So I'm gonna be doing some uploads on there. I have a bigger Cecil video from Ghost Adventures. I'm gonna upload on that. I've just been creating content behind the scenes and planning. Shout out to Kat. Thank you for being my mod tonight. Um, make sure you guys follow us on social media. Subscribe to us. Make sure your notifications are on for the Ghost Girl Diaries channel, which is youtube.com backslash C backslash Ghost Girl Diaries, all one word. Find us on social media. Make sure you follow us there. And as always, I will catch you guys next time. Bye, guys. <laughs>